All right. So for today, I want to start from where we left on the previous lecture, lecture 10. Remember, we <coughs> came up with ideas on how to define solution for this system. This is a hybrid equation on the top, a hybrid inclusion on the bottom. We went through different notions of solutions for classical systems. The first one was for discrete time systems, which are systems of the form x plus equal g of x comma gamma. x is a state, gamma is the input. And then we walk through the natural definition of a solution for such system. And then we did the same for the case of continuous time systems of this form. x dot equal f of x comma gamma. And we argue that now we need to be a little bit careful about whether the solution can be differentiated with respect to time and also whether you can have existence for all t. And then at the end of the lecture, we argue that the notion of solution should be, for the hybrid case, should allow basically the two behaviors. So this is a sketch of what we are going to do today formally in the context of a definition, following the notes. So during flows, <coughs> Uh, for the case of no inputs of the system, that's where we're going to start. We will have that the solution to the system is a function of time that um, is differential, at least in some sense, and satisfies the differential equation, and also satisfies the constraint given by this set C that, remember, we can construct for different examples uh, explicitly. <coughs> and then every time that there is a jump, there is a reset of the state, and there's a counter that uh, we call it J. So during jumps, you can think of the solution being a function of discrete time, and uh, continuous time can change. And then when you have the reset, the new value of your state will be given by a difference equation, which in this case is um, given by capital G. And it needs to satisfy other jump event at the time of the event, you need to have that the state is in the set D. So how do we get to this formalism? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to define time. We need to define what we mean by time for these models. And the natural thing to do is for we already sketch. And if you saw the, um, the additional notes that I included with the scan, if you're looking at the timer tau s of the sample and call problem, then every time that tau s reaches T s star, you can think of resetting that value to zero. And when you do that, you increment this counter j by one. So initially, time starts at zero. We're going to assume that. And uh, when time starts at zero, and the number of events is zero, and then the trajectory of your system, tau s, will evolve continuously, will reach the value of star, and then when that occurs, you apply a differential. Um, up to that point, you apply the differential equation to update tau s, and then at that instant, you apply the difference equation, and then you, in that case, tau s gets to zero. And then this keeps going over and over. So how do we get to these kind of trajectories in general? So we need to define a number of things. So we're going to use the ideas behind the notion of solution for continuous time and for discrete time. And discrete time systems. In lecture 10, we will define time for a hybrid inclusion, which for us will be modeling a full CPS as follows. So we will use ordinary time 
taking values in 0 to plus infinity. Now, this is something that we already defined, and in the notes it's denoted as the reals with the constraint that the values are larger or equal than 0. So ordinary time parameterized the change of the state over the continuous regime. So this is equivalent to what we did for similar to time for solutions to x dot equal f of x comma gamma. That we really described. Now we're going to have um, discrete time or jump time or counter that we're going to denote as j and that j will take values in 0, 1 and so on and this is what we define as the natural of 0 and this will parameterize the change of the state as it jumps. <coughs> so, and this is similar to to time for x plus equal g x comma gamma. We already saw. <coughs> so these two things lead to hybrid time. Okay? So we're going to say that a time instance of the evolution of a hybrid inclusion is given by the pair t comma j and that t comma j from the definitions that we have right above will take values in this set However, we need to put some structure on the sets, subset of this set right here, non-negative real cross um, natural sun zero, in order to describe feasible and meaningful evolution. Okay? So that's the domain of possible values of T and J. And we are interested in solutions to the inclusion defined in very specific subsets of
For example, if I have a CPS that is just a timer with resets and the timer starts at zero and the resets occur at every PS star, then I would only be interested in my solutions to that system to be defined on intervals of length ps star and after an interval of ts star length then <coughs> i will increment my counter j and then i'll do another interval of ps star and i will increment my counter and so on okay so a timer Tau S with hybrid dynamics Tau S dot equal to one when Tau S is in zero to TS star Tau S plus equal to zero when Tau S is equal to TS star must have its solution from tau s now t and j being zero means that i will need to initialize tau s parenthesis zero comma zero to some number and i'm going to take that to be zero to make things simple in other words, this is the value of t equal to zero and j equal to zero, which makes this whole thing the initial condition. That solution should be defined on a subset of R non negative cross natural including zero of the form so initially I'm at zero right what is the timer supposed to do count, count. so tau is of t comma zero right for zero jumps and as t changes should be equal to T, right? Timer. Counts time. When tau s of t comma zero is equal to ts star, then I should have an event. So the first interval of continuous change will be of the form zero comma ts star. That's for t. And that should happen with zero events because that's the initial piece, right? So this itself is a subset of non-negative reals cross natural with zero, okay? So that's the first piece of flow. After the event occurs, what we argued on Thursday last week that J will jump from 0 to 1, so we'll count that event, right? So what I will have is another interval here, but now it will be indexed by the value 1 for J. But since the timer gets reset to 0, and then it needs to count again TS star seconds to have another event, this will also be of the form TS star for the flow, but then cross 1. And then this will be <coughs> united with that. And then I can keep doing this over and over. Okay. So if I look at this at the picture that I show you at the end of the previous lecture, but let's write it here, then what we have is that a timer towers with this hybrid dynamics from that initial condition should have a solution that is defined Thank you. 
this is the non-negative reals, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So this, what you see here is our allowed space for time. It should be defined only on a subset of that, but it's very specific. And if this is my length TS star, the only subset that I'm going to have is this one. Okay? So this guy here corresponds to this guy there. This guy here corresponds to this guy there. And then you can keep going forward and construct this thing. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Good catch. So now that you mentioned, now you can write this subset in red as the union from J T S star comma J plus one T S star cross J for all J in the net. So for j equal to 0, you get 0 to ts star cross 0. j equal to 1, you get ts star to 2 ts star cross 1. And then this gives the, and this is, this whole thing is a subset of that. All the questions. The catch here compared to the ordinary time and the discrete time case right here. Right? What is the domain for the ordinary time? It's zero to infinity. As long as the trajectory is defined from certain things, right? For the discrete time, the case, 0, 1, 2, and so on, as long as the trajectory is defined, which is guaranteed if the input is defined for all those uh, numbers for time counter, and also the function is defined. But for the hybrid case, you don't know what you're going to get. In other words, the domain of your trajectory of your system will be generated as you evolve. So you cannot pre-specify it. You pick an initial condition and then you run with it. And then if the trajectory jumps, then you need to increment j. But if the trajectory doesn't jump, then you need to keep flowing if you can flow. Okay. So that's kind of the, the caveat. And that's why when we think about solutions, thinking about candidates is a good idea because when you write down the candidate, you need to make sure that on the intervals of flow, which is for every fifth j, as long as you have a non zero length interval, then you have to flow. <coughs> then you satisfy the differential equation and the constraint. So keep that in mind. And this is one example where you already see that you, you must be careful about how uh, you pick T's and J's in the definition of the solution.
Another example that is perhaps abstract at this point, but I would also like to have situations where I have more than one jump at a given time. Okay. So imagine that now I build a, an abstract model of a timer with such a feature, so an abstract model of a timer with two events jumps at a single t is the following. So I'm going to just call it tau. So I want to count time as long as um, tau belongs, let's say, for simplicity, 0 to 1. When tau is equal to 1, what I'm going to do is to reset tau to 2. Okay? And when tau is equal to 2, I'm going to reset it back to 0. Okay, so if you were to plot the trajectory of this, you need to be careful about t, and this is where j is going to help us. But suppose that you initialize at zero your timer, then what's going to happen is that when the timer hits one, then it's going to jump to two. And then after it jumps to 2, what's going to happen is it's going to jump to 0. And from there, you can continue. And it repeats. Okay. In that case, we're interested in for tau zero, zero equal to zero, solutions defined for pairs tj in the set and I need your help. What is the set? Zero to one. Cross. Following the notation. So that's the first interval of flow. What happens after the jump? What changes? J goes from zero to one. So this will be this union with something else here. And I know for sure that for the J, this will be one. What about the time? I didn't change time because I didn't evolve continuously. So then I will get one. Okay. And then after that, what happens? There's another jump. another jump, right? So what happens with that jump? What changes? J. J from 1 to 2. And from there, what's going to happen? It's going to go to 0. The timer is going to go to zero, and then it's going to evolve continuously, right, for another second. Now let me get this right. It should be one to two, and then 
this will be union here union we keep going over and over okay soon we're going to attach a value to that domain or to those values of p e and j and what you expect is that in the first piece for j equal to zero you will have a continuously changing quantity from zero to one and then when it jumps then you have a value that is equal to two and then when it jumps back you have a value that at one is equal to zero and then continues all the way to the next event time which is one okay so in order to characterize these subsets so this specific subsets are called hybrid time domains. And you're already been exposed if you watch the introduction to the simulation tool that we suggest you use. But now is the time to define them formally. So here's a definition. <clears throat> a set we're going to label it following the notes E subset of non-negative reals cross zero and the naturals is a hybrid time domain if for each T and J that you pick from E itself, the set <coughs> E but intersected by the box given by capital. Um, or this should be capital T and capital J. Capital T amount of flow, which is what I pick from E, and J jumps that set, this is intersection. can be written in the form this intersection is a union from j little zero to capital J of intervals of flow that are closed of the form tj to tj plus 1 indexed by j where These TJs are defining a sequence that is non-decreasing, um, and these are sometimes. So what do we have here? 
Let's bring back the example of the timer. So, what this is telling me is that someone gives me a set capital E, subset of where we want time to exist. This is going to be a hybrid time domain. If for every element in that set, you can write that set intersected to the box of this size in this form. Okay? So for the, for the timer problem above, pick tj in E, where E in this case is this union from all j's, and we wrote this above. Okay, so we are picking an element from this set. Okay, pictorially, that means that I will have that picture up there. I'm going to put it here. So this is T. This is J. I'm going to reproduce up here and get rid of the top. I have this box here. And I have this other box here, and this other box is in T. So this is TS star, 2TS star, and so on. And this is 0, 1, 2. Okay? So pick any TJ. This needs to hold for any TJ, capital TJ that you pick. Let's pick this one here. So let's say this is my capital T for my experiment that I'm doing right now. And this is my capital J. Okay? So, say we pick capital T equal to um, 3 halves of TS star and J equal to 1. Okay, that's the example that I have here. Can I now write the question is up here, can we write the intersection that is between the red and this box, which is no more than this up to three halves. So this is my box, capital T, capital J. So this is my intersection, right? <coughs> this guy is the box zero to capital T, cross zero, one, all the way to capital J, for a particular J and a capital T. And this is what I have here, is the result of the intersection. So what is in red is my E intersected with that box. Yeah? So the question is, can we write this as, can we write, so question, can we write this as the union of intervals Tj, Tj plus one, cross j from j equals 0 to some j. For some tj's, t0 equal to 0, t1 equal to 0, 
감성 So what do you think? Can we write this red 0 to PS star cross 0, PS star to 3 half of PS star cross 1? Can we write it like this? Yeah, for j equal to 0, pick what? D0 equal to 0, D1 equal to? Ts. Ts star. And then for j equal to 1, pick P1, already picked, Ps star, so it works, P2, Ps star, 3 halves. Okay? So the answer is yes. So the answer to this is yes. Pick T0 equal to 0. T1 equal to Ts star. T2 equal to 3 half Ts star. In fact, that union, 0, T1, cross 0, union, T1, T2, cross 1, is equal to 0 Ts star, cross 0, union, Ts star, 3 half Ts star, cross 1, which is equal to this. So this definition doesn't tell us to check too much, but it puts some a structure. And you see some structure that falls from the definition. One thing is this. What is that assumption on the TJ in, implies on, on the set? Is it that, is it that the TJs um, are related to um, the number of jumps? Only through the index. Only through the index. Let me give you an example. Suppose that I make this T2 to be a smaller than T1. What would that mean for this picture right here? What can I do with this time? Or I could push it to the other side. Okay, this time, right? I could push it to the other side. So I could have, I flow from 0 to Ps star, I jump, I flow from Ps star to 2 Ps star, and then I go back in time. Okay? So if this is violated, if this inequality is violated, then I can go, what possibilities go back in time? Which might be useful for your model, but not what we want. Okay? Another thing that you could do is you say T2 is larger or equal than T1 plus two, some number, then you will need to move forward in time and you will have a gap in time, okay? So this property here, even though it looks simple, is actually allowing us to say that if I had an amount of flow and then I jump, I cannot go back in flow time. Okay, it's always forward. The other structure that you see here is that the counting is from zero to a number without skipping anything. So we don't skip any value of j between j equal to zero and capital J, whatever that capital J is. That means that you need to 
consecutively sweep every value of j. So you can go from j equal to 0 to j equal to 2. Okay? So, and that respects time in discrete time. Okay? Now, take a hybrid time domain that you're already familiar with. <coughs> Continuous time systems has a hybrid time domain without jumps. J equal to zero over. You go from zero, T zero, to infinity perhaps. Okay? That's a higher time domain. Can you write it that way? When you pick an element on the set, the answer is yes. We'll do it in a second. But this definition covers continuous time and also covers discrete time. Now imagine that all that all those elements Tj are all equal to zero. This is satisfied, and all you can do is to jump because all those intervals of flow have zero length. And if you have an interval of flow of zero length, then there is no flow. Right? So now you can imagine that all your events are occurring for t equal to zero and j keeps counting. Okay. So it's general enough. And again, it's needed to keep track of all flows and jumps at the same time. So another example is a solution to x dot equal f of x, let's forget about the input, that is defined for all t greater or equal than zero. In that case, you would like to have that your e is zero to infinity cross zero. That means there are no jumps. No jumps. Okay? Why is that a higher time domain? Well, we'll bring back the definition. We need to have that for every capital T, capital J in E, when we intersect it, we get something of this form. So now, pick Tj in that E, so in fact, <coughs> Tj in that E, then because of this structure, then necessarily j is equal to zero. That's all we have to pick from. And E intersected with the box from zero to t cross zero. This guy is equal to what? That just the time from zero up until you've chosen time? Well, just look at this. And it's a useful exercise. Put E here. Okay? Put E here. So that is what? That is zero to infinity cross zero. That's E. Intersected with that box. So what is the intersection between zero infinity and zero to t? Zero to t. And what is the intersection between zero and zero? Zero. So that's exactly what you were saying, is the box of zero to t. And now, that's, can you write this now as a union from zero to capital J of intervals of the form. Then this is equal to the union from J equal to zero 
to zero, which is just one set from T0 to T1. You need to connect to the internet first. Okay. Siri wants to answer our question. Um, T0, T1, equal to capital T. Okay. <clears throat> So that's how you use this definition. And one thing I wanted to add here is that because what we have up there, because capital J, capital T and capital J are elements of E, these are finite numbers, right? Therefore, when you do this union, this is a bounded set. So this set is a bounded subset of where we want hydrogen to take values from. And moreover, is the finite union of closed intervals indexed by j. That means that the set is closed. It's a closed set. Because we are in Euclidean space and we have a bounded and closed set, then this means that this set is compact. And we call it a compact hybrid time domain. We just added the prefix compact to it. Questions? Questions? Yep. So it's when we say it's closed, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're operating over a finite time, but we can write the set. As one, as one set. So maybe a sign out here will be useful. A set S is closed if for every sequence of points xi such that xi belongs to S for all i and Xi converges 
the point x then x belongs to x. Okay. So you take an example and you pick your set S 0 to 1. Pick any sequence there, xi, so pick it for instance 1 over i. That sequence uh, xi, 1 over i, belongs to S and xi converges to One, one divided by two, one divided by a million, one divided by ten millions converges to zero. So that's my x, and that x belongs to s. Then, if you can do this for all x i's in there that converge, then s is closed. Right? Another way to think about it is take the set, compute the boundary. In this case, zero and one is the boundary. That's the boundary belongs to the set. Okay? And then the answer is yes. But now take the example S open 0, 1. Then you pick xi, that is 1 over i in S. xi goes to 0, which is x, but x does not belong to S. Because S is not including 0. So it's not an open, not a closed set in the context of boundaries, but it's not a closed set in the context that I define. Okay. So that's the definition of closeness of a set that we use. To clarify what you mean by that. So now that we have time, right? So let's go back to this picture up here. This is my timer, right? Definition EJ. That's where timer is defined. But up here, I have another actress, which is tau s. And tau s is doing something. That is our trajectory, or the evolution of the state or solution to the system. So let's take a five minute break, and then you can think about how we should define now that piece, the value of my state on the hybrid fine domain. Okay. Make sense? Okay, let's come back at 9.10.